Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kyra, and here on this channel, we're all about real makeup for real life and real people. would have seen by the title today I am creating the ultimate makeup bag this is a concept for curating a smaller collection of makeup started or formulated by Harry makes it up here on YouTube I've also seen Arna Elaine and Sarah Rose do similar videos so I will link all three of those videos down below so you can watch some more like this one so the focus of this little project within my makeup collection is to focus on less but better and products that I will absolutely use. These products are functional, they are comfortable, and they are products that make me feel my best. And this project is also designed to help us to use what we have and discover it and really get to know it deeply and to create more looks with less. So the first step is your makeup underwear, so to speak. This is your prep. These are the products that you use every single day without fail, would not do your makeup without them. So for me, I start off every single day with my sunscreen. This is the Paula's Choice Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30. There are days where I'm not wearing a foundation based type product. This is enough for me. It evens my skin tone. I go in with concealer and go on about my day. But today and any day when I am wearing makeup, my favorite base product, hands down, say it with me, the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. This is the shade 27. This is my summer color. It's the one I have on today. I love this. It is the most comfortable. It is very long lasting on my skin. Let me know if you want this one to be the next foundation I review. But for me, this is a necessity to have in my curated makeup collection. Next is concealer and the perfect one for me is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I have the shade 3.5 and this works really well for me under the eyes right now. It's hydrating, it always looks good under my eyes as well as it has really good but wearable coverage using a lighter base product. I can use this on my face. I can use this as my only base product and I love that particular concealer for that. And then as an oily girl, I absolutely have to set my face and for that I chose the LYS Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I have the shade Resilience, which is translucent. This works great under the eyes as well as on the face, so it's a great multitasking product. It just is a very good, straightforward powder for me. It sets my makeup, it helps keep things intact throughout the day. And like I said, the bonus is that I can wear it under the eyes as well. Before I go in with brows, I always prime my eyes for eyeshadow. My eyeshadow will not stay on otherwise. And for me, the holy grail, one and only forevermore, is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Amplifying Eye Base. Love this one. It's very waxy and sticky. I do choose to set it down to increase the longevity, but I love that one. Now for brows, I went with three products and it's because I could get a couple of different brow looks using these pr three products. So the first thing I have to have is a clear brow gel. Anyone will do. This one happens to be the Kosas Air Brow in the clear shade, as well as a tinted brow gel. Again, anything that matches my natural brows will do. This one happens to be the Essence Make Me Brow. A microfine pencil is another need for me. I love it to have a spoolie on it so I don't have to take an extra spoolie anywhere with me. And I like a fine brow because it's more versatile. You can definitely get some more hair-like strokes, some more natural looking strokes in your brows, but you can also fill them in 
if you like. The reason these are multitasking for me today, what I did is I went in with the tinted brow gel first, then I took my pencil and filled in any sparse areas, and then I went back in with the clear brow gel over everything to keep it in place. But I could just use the clear brow gel and the pencil, I could just use these two, I could just use the pencil, or I could use either one of these separately. So that's kind of what you're looking for in a makeup underwear type product is something that could be multifunctional as well. I wear mascara no matter what kind of look I'm creating and the one I've been loving lately and just repurchased is the e.l.f. Lash It Loud Volumizing Mascara. I don't think this is particularly volumizing unless you're letting it dry in between coats and building it up, you know, slowly but surely coat by coat. But that's why I like this particular one. I can get a very natural lash look like I have on today or I can, like I said, let those layers dry and build it up slowly to get a much more dramatic lash look. So this one's pretty versatile in this way. It lasts a long time. I My last tube I had had since February, so definitely part of the makeup underwear category. So the second category, and admittedly the biggest probably for most people, are your staples. These are the products that are your ride or die and they never fail you. This is what you might call your makeup comfort zone. They can be worn alone or combined for a different look, which is something we'll also talk about. So let's start with a cream contour or bronzer product. I like a multifunctioning cream product like this. Another good option besides the one I'll talk about today is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. It can be concentrated as a contour product, but it can also be blended out to a warm, more bronzer type product. My personal favorite though is the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer, and I have the shade Butter Biscuit. I have massive pan and usage on this. I did use this as my cream contour product today. I love this, it wears well on me, it's very dependable, and that's why I chose that one but I do want a powder bronzer. Sometimes I wear them together like I did today and sometimes I wear them separately. And my hands down favorite powder matte bronzer is my Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze Coconut Perfect Tan in the shade 104 Tantastic. This has been a favorite since I purchased it, and I'm really sad that Marc Jacobs is doing some rebranding. I hope they bring this product back in some capacity because it's just such a wonderful staple for me. I love the big mirror that I have to offer. There's a ton of product in here, and this is also a really good shade as any bronzer that is appropriate for my skin tone. This is going to help me in my eyeshadow looks to give a nice natural contour to the eye without it looking like eyeshadow because it is the same shade that you're wearing as bronzer, if that makes sense. Love this one, definitely a staple. For highlighter, I only picked one. And I'd be curious if any of you guessed this one, but this is my all time favorite highlighter in my collection and it is the Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder in the shade Privilege. The reason I love this and picked this, first of all, this is more like a glossy, glassy skin finish versus a stripe of highlighter on my face. So this is going to work for me all year long, no matter what my skin tone's looking like because this is very transparent. The other thing I love about this is it's kind of like a peachy, pinky, gold champagne had a baby, and that's the shade of this you will be able to see that I have completely destroyed the center of this product. But I just love it so much. It's so beautiful. And I picked this because it not only would work for me around, but it'll also work with all of the blush choices that I chose today. So that is why I picked the Nabla one. Now blush, you know this was the hardest category for me. I picked three, two are cream, one is powder. I am wearing the powder option today, so I'll start with that. 
my favorite powder blush that goes with every single look no matter what i can easily throw it in a makeup bag with everything else that i've chosen and know that it's going to work for me and that is my tarte amazonian clay 12 hour blush in the shade party i again have huge pan in this you might see a theme here this is a beautiful blush. It's absolutely stunning. Again, there's some warmth to it, but there's enough pink to it that it also works with cooler tone looks like what I have on today. So these two are absolutely beautiful together. However, I do love a more peachy neutral blush. And for that, again, an old time favorite, it's the Flower Beauty Blush Bomb in the shade Pinched. This is sort of a peachy brown shade and it is definitely a favorite in my collection. It's dewy, it's sort of sheer, which makes it great for layering other blush over top. So I could put this down and then put the pink Tarte blush on top. I just absolutely love this formula as well. So it was a no brainer to include these two but I wonder if you'll guess what type of blush I have for the third one. It is my Nude Sticks Nudies Matte All Over Face Bronze Color in the shade Beach Babe. I love a good sunburny look and I could not pass up including this shade in my little capsule makeup collection. Not only can I get this sun burning look, but this when blended out, you can use this as an all over face warmth color. You can use this kind of in place of a bronzer for a more no makeup makeup look. And you can also use it on your lips. It's very comfortable and it's a nice little monochromatic look and just another way, nice way to incorporate another product for the lips without actually including another lip product. Before I get into eyeshadow, I would typically, most days, set my face, and I'm looking for something to extend the wear of my makeup, and if it sets the powders down, all the better. So I've chosen one that I'm not super glad that I like so much because it will be expensive to repurchase, but it is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray Party All Night, Stay All Day. I really like this. This does keep my makeup on. I definitely feel like it extends the wear, but it also does set down those powders on the face. It gives a nice glow, a natural glow without having anything glowy or oily or anything like that in there. So that is definitely a staple. for eyeballs my ride or die eyeliner you guys know is the wet n wild coal eyeliner in the shade Simma brown now i hope they never get rid of that and then another staple eye product before we get into the palette that i chose is a cream eyeshadow that i can throw on for an everyday look i can wear it as a base and that is my charlotte tilbury eyes to mesmerize now my shade is Marie Antoinette, but I do believe they have the same shade and it's now been renamed Oyster Pearl. And this is a very like moussey, putty-like texture, but it creates the most stunning one eyeshadow look. Got a nice, deep, warm base to it with tons of beautiful sparkle. So you can apply this to your eyelid. You can blend it out in the crease. It's gonna look like multiple shadows depending on how far you blend them out. It's just an everyday staple for me. I, If I'm really in a hurry but I desperately want to wear eyeshadow, I go for this one every time. If you've been around on my channel, the palette might be an easy one for you, but I knew right away, I looked at my other palettes. I definitely looked at my other palettes, but I kind of had a feeling this would be the one, and it is, and that is my Persona Identity Palette. This is the old packaging. It's now in a hard plastic packaging. I personally love this one because the artwork is stunning. But you can see here, I have pan in this shade. I have dips in every other shade. I have a really good dip in the purple now. This is my ride or die neutral palette. I feel like I can create endless looks. I feel like I hardly ever create the same look. And yet it's just 
perfect. I love having this shade to set down my primer. This shade, uh, Sassy, also can double as a really beautiful highlighter. So even though I just have the one Nabla one, I could absolutely use this if I wanted something a little more potent, a little more visible. I'm always happy every single time I use this palette for my eye look. I've never been disappointed whether I use a few shades or half the palette. It's a beauty. All right, let's talk about staple lips and then we'll get into the most fun category, which is the wild card category. Now, for me, I have to have a lip liner. I'm almost 40 and I just feel more comfortable and I like the look of my lip line better when I use a lip liner. So I did pick an excessive two. <laughs> and here's why. The first one is my Holy Grail MAC lip pencil in the shade Whirl. This is very, very similar to my actual lip color. So it makes a beautiful contouring shade because it is slightly cool toned, but it's also, you know, got a nude factor to it as well. So this is my second one that I'm working on here. I absolutely adore this. This is the lip liner I have on currently, but another huge favorite and one that I thought was important to include because it's a warmer color, it would pair better with some of the warmer toned lips that I chose, but this is the Milani understatement lip liner in the shade Nude Entrance. So as you can see, you know, the difference between Whirl and Nude Entrance, I love them both. Again, I've used up an entire one of these, very quickly I might add, and that's my second one. <laughs> I have five staple lip products. Let's start with the one that I am wearing today, and that is my Revlon Super Lustrous Melting Glass Shine in the shade Glazed Mauve. Again, this is my lips, but better in a sort of sheer balmy lipstick. This is really comfortable for every day. Again, it just adds a little bit more color and fullness to my lips. I love this paired with the shade Whirl. You know, this is like the sweatpants of makeup, if you will, or lip products. It's just so comfy. It's hydrating, but it also looks really beautiful on the lips. Next, I have to have a couple of nudes. Starting with my pinky nude, I have the Flower Beauty Petal Pout Lipstick in the shade Spiced Petal. This is a color dupe for the shade Pillow Talk. It's a cream formula instead of a matte formula like the Pillow Talk, but it's also just a little bit thicker, a little bit more tenacious, and I feel like it lasts on the lips a lot longer than Pillow Talk does. So this is my pinky nude. And then for my nude nude, this is my perfect nude. I love it, I wear it a ton, and I just wanted a little bit of luxury to my lip collection here. This is Very Victoria from Charlotte Tilbury. It is in her Matte Revolution formula, and it just works great for me. I love wearing it. It works great with Whirl, it works great with the nude entrance, and I might add at least these two make beautiful cream cheeks if you want to incorporate one of these as a blush in your routine. I certainly would personally. And then the last lipstick in this category is my NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in the shade Dulce Vita. This is my favorite of these pencil-y things. It's just kind of like a warm terracotta and a rose had a baby or something like that. Mine's getting very short. It was just a like deluxe sample size, but it is one I would happily repurchase because it's really, really beautiful. It comes off quite red on my lips, more like a bricky terracotta maybe with a little bit of rose. I love this though. I also have the powder blush and the liquid blush in this shade because I love it so much. And the last staple in this category is a lip gloss. And you might be surprised to know that it is the Rimmel Stay Glossy in the shade Blushing Belgraves. This would top any of my lip choices beautifully, as well as help give that sort of juicy, maybe even ombre look. This is quite light in tone. And so it really is 
a look that I love to layer this type of a slightly lighter creamy milky gloss over any of these lipsticks upstairs here and it's comfortable i like this gloss with just a lip liner as well it's ever so slightly shimmery in here but it is like i said more of a cream milky kind of color and it's perfect for my capsule makeup bag So the last category is wild card and this is the most fun category it's a small handful of products that are going to help you to elevate your staple products give you options different textures like i said things to bump up that everyday look into maybe something that's for an occasion these are products that might take you out of your comfort zone and be fun to explore or to try a new trend with and you want to think things like glitter bold lips whatever is your elevation for your everyday look maybe it's liquid liner maybe it's a more dramatic mascara maybe it's a lot of things, but let's talk about mine. <laughs> so I have two lips in my wild card category. The first one being a clear gloss. This one happens to be the Lime Crime Wet Cherry Gloss in the shade Extra Poppin'. It is just plain old clear lip gloss, but I find that this can elevate a lot of lips or even lip liners to a completely different level because you're just adding that juicy, glossy lip on top and i just love this i think it's absolutely gorgeous and then the return of nars velvet matte lip pencil if you've been around on my channel for a long time you probably know that this is my signature lip color even though i haven't worn it a lot in the recent months it's the nars velvet matte lip pencil in the shade let's go crazy and i absolutely adore the shade like love 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 it i feel so confident and ready to take over the world when i wear this it also makes me think of my grandmother who always wore magenta lipstick or red and i just love this it's it's perfect to add as a wild card to my capsule wardrobe of makeup now for me as an eyeshadow lover, I feel most like elevating my look with my eyes. Whether that's glitter, fun shadows, something not so neutral, that's what I've included today. The first product is a single product. It is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Ladybird. I feel like when you layer this color or this shadow over any other shadow, it just adds that sheer glow that just interest glamour but it is absolutely stunning it's one that i have had for quite a while and it's one that i reach for regularly i did take this to vegas with me it's something if i need to quickly transition from day to night i'll just tap some of this over whatever eye look i have on throw a bold lip on and call it a day and just get out the door and go have some fun. However, when I really want to have some fun and I have the time to do it in my makeup routine, I love duochrome eyeshadows and to add to my persona palette, I created a little custom palette of Sydney Grace single eyeshadows. Nine of these 12 are just special shades that absolutely tickle my pickle. I love them. I am wearing this one right here today called The Greatest Gift, I believe. Yeah. I just love these. This is something I can throw on top of a neutral crease and just really elevate my look. Feel like I've done something special with my eyes, things like that. I'm gonna have a little chart up here telling you what the shades are but then I did also pick three matte shadows over here to elevate my wardrobe of matte shadows a little further I wanted something a little more pinky a little bit more cool tone to be able to use as well as a deeper green and a deeper teal to anchor any blue green or even neutral looks used as a liner etc so I really feel like this is going to elevate my wardrobe of eyeshadows and that 
putting them all in a palette as singles was probably the best way to go versus trying to pick an already pre-made palette. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my capsule makeup wardrobe. I have no idea if this would even fit into a makeup bag. Probably one of my bigger makeup bags it would. But either way, these are the products that are my absolute makeup underwear, my anchor products, and my wild card products. Let me know down below, would you want to see a get ready with me using some of these products? If so, I would love to do that. And if you had to or wanted to build a makeup capsule wardrobe, let me know one product that would be in each of the categories, whether it's your underwear, your anchor products, or your wild card. I would love to hear that from you. And with all of that said, thank you for spending part of your day with me here today. If you did enjoy today's video, I would so appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing before you leave so you don't miss out on future fun videos like this one. With all of that said, I hope all of your makeup days are absolutely beautiful makeup days and I will see you in my next video real soon.